Hello and welcome to this new Terrain Breakdown in Gaia. Today we will take a look at this Nordic Lakes terrain, which is quite complex as you can see here. And we also have two graphs, one for, for the terrain and the other one for the lakes. So let's get started. I started out with a range node. I change the scale as well as the seed to find something that uh, I liked. Then I use a displace node to simply give it some randomness. Same thing, another range node here with displace node. I combine the two using the max with 100% ratio. So we have only the highest peaks showing up. After that, I used the shaper node to flatten some areas. As you can see here, I used the local effect to flatten the areas while retaining the peaks. And I also used another shaper node with slightly different settings. I combine the two and this is the final result using the mean. And this is the first part of uh, my, my shape. After that, uh, I placed a mountain. I change the type to B, leave it to display, so I have uh, all the details. I choose a higher scale value than the default one, and I also change the seed just to find something uh, pretty to look at. After that, uh, I placed a warp. And this part here, it's, uh, as you can see here, it's for the lake itself. However, if uh, you take a look at the combined node, I use the subtract method. So we have this flat area with only 70% ratio. That's because for the lake maps to work uh, as intended, you should have some details of the surface. If you have only flat areas, the final texture for the water of a lake will be very, very bland and flat. So that's why I used only 70%. I have some flat area, so I know that the lakes will start in this zone. However, I, by doing so, I retained all the details but uh, I will show you in more in depth later. I placed a Carver node. Carver simply makes uh, breaks uh, as well as some folding in the terrain, as you can see. I change uh, the displacement and uh, the seed a little bit, but uh, it's mostly default. Then I place the erosion node with the slope bias 85 with as a preset and I also enable the mean post process or blend mode so I retained the details I'll show you now this is without the mean let's take this part here for example and this is with the mean as you can clearly see we have more defined costs here and we also regained some details. We have the breaker. Now this is with, with the breaker. This is without. For example, pay attention here in this area. As you can see, we have more rivers going on. I used a very subtle setting for this breaker. As you can see, a 20% depth only. Mode to accurate. I always recommend to use accurate because it's simply better. However, it takes a lot uh, longer to load. I also increase the river length so the rivers are longer. And this is it basically. Then we have the surface node. Same thing here. Very subtle detail. Style to rough. So we have some rough rocky terrains. You can increase the strength if you want. However, big be very careful because uh, this is only 1k resolution. If uh, 
you export at a higher resolution, you will have more details, so the terrain will be will be more rough. That's why I used only 12% of strength. And this is it for the shape of the terrain. Let's start talking about the texturing part. We will start by covering the lakes. If you never used the lake node, it is a very powerful node. It has many settings, especially if you enable the flood control, which allows you to control the amount of rainfall on your terrain, so you can make completely submerged scenes, as well as uh, subtle lakes and uh, wet surfaces. In this case, I wanted a central lake with some smaller ones. So what I did was to, first of all, make a mask. This is the mask. You don't need to actually paint everything. You just need to paint like I did here, just uh, a little bit in the places where you want the lakes to be. In this case, I wanted the big lake in the center and some smaller ones like here, here, in general, where the flattened areas are. I connected it to the rain input, which works as a mask, and the mask input is connected with the surface output, which is this one, okay. As you can see, I made a portal here and the mask is connected to it. So we have the mask, we have uh, our lakes. I increase the precipitation amount to 200, so we have tons of water. The more the precipitation, the more, the higher the water will be. Uh, that's the only settings I changed. After that, I pin it as uh, underlay. And as you can see, I made a portal for the lakes output, which define the area of the lake. So this blue color, it's uh, the lakes output. Then we have a depth, which is uh, useful for texturing, as I will show you later. We have a shore. The shore is the coastline. In this case, this coast here, okay? like here or here and the main output uh, you don't usually use it if you use it it's uh, practically what you see here you will have the blue color and uh, with the black and that's it so i use the depth and connected it to a blur node now you can't see anything that's because you must uh, enable the enhanced visibility or you can also connect an auto level and you will obtain the same result but it's just faster to use the enhanced visibility so as you can see we have the mask i blur it a little bit just at 0.2 with three iterations so we have this fuzzy looking edges i connected a warp with only 3% in size as well as 20% strength, you must be very, very light handed with this node in the case of the lakes. I also bumped up the iterations so we have more waviness. This is with the warp, this is without. As you can see, there is a little bit of a difference. Actually, it's a drastically change, and this will fake some water uh, waves that you may have in uh, real life. I also enable the mean. This is without the mean. This is with the mean. As you can see, without you have uh, also some uh, rivers looking mask, and uh, it is less dynamic. With the mean, it looks. Uh, more realistic and after that I finally made the texture using the clutter node for the texture you must consider obviously the 
lake part not the light blue shapes only the lake starting from the coast this area here and going toward the center i made uh, as you can see here a gradient starting uh, from the bottom which is uh, lighter and uh, at the top it's darker you can either use the clutter or you can connect a sat maps sat map or multiple sat maps after that i placed a portal and this is it for the texturing of the lake we reached the final texturing phase so it is divided into three parts this one is for the terrain itself without the lakes this one is for the rivers and then we have the lakes so let's start from the terrain itself the, the mountains i use the texture node default settings connected a uh, set maps i simply found something i liked same thing here mix them together with the max method so i have some highlight on my terrain then here i used the soil node with the graded method which uh, give you this nice gradients all along the terrain otherwise uh, only the thinnest shapes will be highlighted into the mask i connected a greenish texture for the grass and hills and i used the mixer with uh, the map that i created before so this is before this is after i use the mean because uh, i wanted the green and uh, otherwise you will get this uh, white rocks with the max or you can also try other methods but for me the mean works well then i made the rivers i wanted this breaks on the terrains to be rivers i simply copied the parameters of the clutter node to do it you go to the lakes you select your clutter node right click you say copy settings go back to your graph you place a clutter okay and you paste the settings and you have the gradients my clutter is going into the mixer i use the blend mode in the first input uh, i used uh, i connected it uh, with uh, the texture of the rocks and hills second input uh, is the water third input the mask is the flow data map with secondary flows enabled rainfall to default and quality one three which will give me finer details you can also go 101 but it will take a lot of time to elaborate to render so i don't recommend it i usually use 14 but in this case 13 is uh, what i was looking for and this is the result then i connected the vegetation node which creates grass I change the density to 30% so I have more grass all the other settings are at default so this is with the, with the vegetation this is with the mixer so without the vegetation and with the vegetation I did some color correction simply change the contrast the saturation I decrease it because I wanted whiter rocks increase the luminance so it is brighter overall i also applied the equalization because i got uh, rgb artifacts uh, on the grass it was blue instead of green so i needed the equalize this is with the color correction this is without and finally the mixer which adds the lake itself for the mixer i connected the first input to my color fx node and for the second input i use the clutter of my lake so this one which means i combine the texture of the rocks 
um, general terrain with the texture of the lake. And to mask it, I used the lake's output, which is this one, the second output of the lake's node. I use the blend mode 100%, so I have all the water. And this is it. This is the end of the breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it. If that's the case, leave a like to support the channel. If you have any question, comment below. Subscribe to stay up to date with the latest contents. And I see you in the next one. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use. Cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light.